You've seen from a graph how to tell whether a function is discontinuous or not. Now we're going to be looking at equations, and then we're also going to be classifying the discontinuities. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to find where a function is discontinuous and if the discontinuity is removable or non-removable. First of all, what is a discontinuity? We already found that out. Um, it's basically where there's a hole or jump or gap or an asymptote. Um, but now we're going to be learning to, are they removable or are they non-removable? Okay, if a function is removable, you can basically plug the hole by redefining a certain point. There's a little fix. So you'll see a hole in the graph, but it would be real easy to just plug that hole and then the graph would be continuous again. Okay, if a function is non-removable, that means we can't, there's, it's a way bigger fix than we want. So usually there's going to be an asymptote. Okay. How do you find these? Basically, we're just going to ask ourselves the same question that we'd ask if we were finding the domain of a function. What can't x be? And I'm just going to put on here, it's very similar to finding the domain. So this should give you good extra practice in case you were struggling a little bit with that. All right, let's go ahead and look at some examples. First of all, we're going to find the x values, if any, at which f is not continuous, and then we'll try to classify the discontinuities as removable or non-removable. If I look at this first problem, if I'm looking for where it's not continuous, I'm looking for is there anything that x can't be? And I know if we have a fraction, we're going to be concerned about the denominator. If this denominator equaled zero, then my function would be undefined, so it would be discontinuous there. So we're just going to figure out, is there a spot where that denominator would equal zero. And I'm just going to go ahead and solve it. Subtract one from both sides. I would try to square root both sides, but notice I'm going to be trying to take the square root of a negative number, which is a big no-no, which means there really are no places where x is going to equal zero. So this function is fine. We can just say that this is a continuous function. We don't need to worry about classifying the discontinuities because there are none. Okay, let's look at the next example. f of x equals x squared minus x over x squared minus 1. Again, we're concerned about the denominator. Please remember in the, when we were finding um, x-intercepts and y-intercepts, we pretty much ignored the denominator because we wanted to see where the function equaled 0. Now we want the denominator because we need to figure out what would make the problem undefined, and that would be where the denominator equals 0. And I'm going to, on this one, because I noticed that this is a difference of squares, I'm going to go ahead and factor it as x plus 1 times x minus 1. And using the zero product property, I would know that this function would equal 0 when x equals negative 1 and when x equals 1. So these are the two values where the function is discontinuous. There's something happening there. There's a hole, a gap, an asymptote, or something. We just need to figure out what. The next way that we're going to classify them, I'm going to rewrite the function in the factored form. So I'm going to write it as x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, if a function has non, has removable discontinuities, we should have something that we can cancel. So there would be maybe an x minus 1 up top that I could cancel with or an x plus 1 up top that I could cancel with. You'll notice there is no canceling going on in this problem, which means at both of these places, they are non-removable discontinuities, which means we would see holes there. So for my answer, I would write non-removable discontinuities and those are occurring at both x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. So again, if we graph this, we would see two vertical asymptotes happening. All right, next one, we have f of x equals x minus 3 over x squared minus 9. Again, we're concerned about the denominator because that's what would make the problem undefined. So I'm going to set that denominator equal to 0. And then I notice it's a difference of squares again, so that will factor as x plus 3 times x minus 3. If I use the zero product property again, my zeros will be x equals negative 3 and x equals 3. So I know that's where we have discontinuities happening. Something's going on there. Let's just figure out what. I'm going to rewrite the problem. I'm just going to rewrite the numerator, and then I'm going to write the denominator in factored form. Okay, you'll notice on this one now, since I've got an x minus 3 up top and an x minus 3 down below, I can actually cancel those out. So since I can cancel them out, I'm actually able to remove this discontinuity from the problem. So at x equals 3, there is a removable discontinuity. And that means if I were to graph this, I would see a hole at that spot that I could just quick jump over. 
Okay, notice that the x plus 3 cannot cancel out at all. So it's going to be a non-removable, and that was when x equals negative 3. So we've got a non-removable discontinuity at x equals negative 3. So if I were to graph this, I would see a vertical asymptote happening at x equals negative 3. Let's try one more example. We've got f of x equals x squared plus 2x all over x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay, if we want to find our discontinuities, again, we're concerned about the denominator equaling 0. So I'm going to factor that as x plus 2 times x plus 1. And again, using the zero product property, that would happen when x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1. So I know I've got discontinuities here. I just need to figure out, are they holes or are they asymptotes? Are they removable or non-removable? So again, I'm going to rewrite the problem. And when I write the, rewrite the numerator this time, I'm actually going to factor out an x when I do that. And then I'm going to write the denominator in factored form. And then you'll notice when I do that, I can actually cancel out the x plus 2s. So since I was able to cancel them out, I can pretty much just remove them from the problem. That makes them a removable discontinuity. And that is happening at x equals negative 2. Okay, and then the other one, x plus 1, it cannot cancel with anything. So that means there is a non-removable discontinuity happening at x equals negative 1. So if I were to graph this, I would see a hole at x equals negative 2, and I would see an asymptote happening at x equals negative 1. And one last note I just would like to point out. Notice we did absolutely nothing with this x right here because this x would not make this problem undefined. So we pretty much can ignore it because of that. So hopefully now you can find discontinuities and label them as non-removable and removable.